that's okay. Okay, okay there we go. Recording now. Um, so we're just going to talk about the cup challenge for a minute here as people still get on. So, um, so Beachbody does this cup challenge twice a year usually, and um, basically what happens is we get into teams of five, and there can only be one lifetime dime per team. There doesn't have to be a, a diamond on the team, but you can't stack a team with a um, bunch of high-ranking people. And um, and you work together to get points. And you can earn points through SC, and you can also earn points through rank advancements. And sometimes they throw in another way to earn points, like when they had Shakeology boosts come out and stuff like that. So, um, And for each point you get, um, every time you reach a milestone together, collectively as a team, you get a chance at some prizes. So usually they give away some cool swag. And I think I saw some of that posted um, about t-shirts and there's a um, sweatshirt and um, a water bottle of some sort, stuff like that. And so it's, it'll be really fun. And it's fun because you, um, you get to work together towards a, a goal. So usually what happens is everybody on the team has to hit SC5 to earn the first tier prizes. And then they have all the way up, all these prizes, all the way up to um, the first place team gets to go to LA and get treated like royalty and meet um, corporate. And they usually do something with the trainer and stuff like that. So um, there were some great statistics out there and I can post them for you about people who are on cup teams and how they earn more money, like significantly more money than people who aren't on cup teams. Um, and I think um, Carl just did a video recently about some more statistics about the importance of it, but really it's just kind of a fun atmosphere and it, and it moves, helps move everybody's business forward because, you know, there's kind of a spirit about it of doing it together as a team. So let's talk, um, it starts February 1st, the registration opened yesterday, and um, let's talk on the team page about getting teams together. And you don't have to do it with your, I mean, you can do it with your upline, but you don't have to. You can, if you can do it across teams, you can do it with people outside of um, Inspiration Nation or um, or your uplines teams. So you don't, you can cross, and that's sometimes really cool too, because you can kind of get together with people you maybe otherwise wouldn't have worked with or do challenge groups with new people, stuff like that. So, um, so okay, so now we're at five after. So why don't we get going? So Terry, I'm going to have you introduce Terry to us so that we can um, get to know her a little bit, but I just really want to thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've got my pen and paper ready and um, I loved what you've done with Terry. Oh, thank uh, you. Terry's website. So I'm eager to hear more about what you do. And stuff, so. Yeah, her website's pretty cool. I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to mute myself so we don't have feedback. Here. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be quick because I know Carrie has a lot of good stuff she's going to share with everybody tonight. Um, so this is Carrie. I don't know where she is on your screen, but she's right in the middle of mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I've talked with her a lot over the last few months, but I never really got to like talk face to face with her. So this is kind of yeah. cool. I, um, I kind of hide from the camera. So. <laughs> no, um, you didn't. I um, know. But see, I, I sort of sought her out. I, I had interviewed um, uh, several web designers and really put a lot of time into figuring out um, who I wanted to help us, um, my husband and I, with the website that we sort of had on a different site. It was on a Weebly site, and I wanted to um, upgrade it to WordPress and move everything over and make it look a little bit more, a lot more professional. Um, I had no idea how to do that, so um, we were ready to invest a little bit um, in doing this, and um, I found Carrie through. Um, it was another coach who happened to be in a mastermind call of mine. Um, and I just, I looked at the bottom of her site and I saw her name when I went to go see Carrie's um, website, you know, just the look of it and how she, you know, how it all looked sort of intrigued me. So um, I filled out one of her applications as I did with several other people and then um, talked to her about just kind of what I wanted in things. But before we even talked about anything, she, this is the one thing I wanted to say, and then I'll stop talking. She was so sweet. Like, she talked to me like we were BFFs for years. Oh, and we still do. Oh, I know. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, that first initial contact, and I was like, oh, I love her. Um, <laughs> but she really took time to get to know who I was, which to me was, like, huge, um, especially if I wanted her to help me with 
branding and my web design and figuring out who, you know, I wanted to reach and contact and who my customers should be. So she took a lot of time. I mean, several hours <laughs> um, on the phone with me, which was awesome. So, um, and you've all seen, if you haven't seen the website, check it out because she did a really good job. It's, it's really cool. Um, I love it. And um, now she's going to, Take it away. So Do my thing. Yours. I want to apologize. The dog is in here and <laughs> hopefully she will be nice and quiet for us. But if you hear squeaky toys, she's a puppy. So, um, okay. So I see a little green button that says share screen. Is that what I click? Yep. Uh huh. Let's and then see. there'll be some options and you just pick whatever option is showing what you want to show. I don't see my presentation on there. I have it open. It's Let's up. see. Huh. Hmm. Hold on. Let's let me close out okay. some of the other ones. Uh oh. Where did everybody go? We're still here. <laughs> no, I don't want to leave the meeting. Let's see. You have to no, it's not showing. Share screen. Are you? Can you find us? No. Mm -mm. I have like all the other windows open like I have the desktop um, maybe that's what I have to show yeah sometimes if you do the if you even if you share the desktop um, it will show if your presentations on the desktop it will show it okay whatever's in front of it and we can tell you whether if we can see it or not okay well I'll try to go into I'm sorry I have never used a zoom call before so um, no, okay. <laughs> let's see I will try um, here we go. I'm going to try it. Okay. Share. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can go into play mode and see if you guys yep. are here. So let me know. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Can you guys still see it? Yep. That's good. Okay, cool. Um, so today I want to talk about a little bit about your brand, defining your brand, and also how to hone in on your customers, kind of niching down. Um, because I know with Beachbody, you guys have, you know, same products, same services, and there's a lot of you, right? Um, so you need to kind of find your niche in the Beachbody world. Um, so you can make more money and also be very, very strategic with your marketing. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, and one of the key things that I like to say is always keep people in the center of your work. And if you do that, you guys will be rocking. So there is a quote that, and I have to see if I can minimize you guys because it's covering up part of my screen. Um, well, I can't. Let's see. Does it don't have? No, it doesn't give me my mouse anymore. Um, let's swing it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I often went fishing up in Maine during the summer. Personally, I'm very fond of strawberries and cream, but I have found that for some strange reason, fish prefer worms. So when I went fishing, I didn't think about what I wanted. I thought about, I think it says fish, I'm not saying, I'm not sure it's gone, what they wanted. I didn't bait the hook with strawberries and cream. Rather, I dangled a worm or a grasshopper in front of the fish and said, wouldn't you like that? So the point of this um, quote is, I see a lot of times people doing their brand, doing their website, what they want instead of really thinking about what their customers want. Um, for example, when it comes to colors, I know with Terry, um, we first started out no pink, no pink, because she didn't like pink. Um, but it came down to, for the color psychology of her website, um, it's not a bright pink, but it's just a little bit of pink. And it works. And I think, Terry, I think you're cool with it now, right? <laughs> so, um, Okay, so, oh, this is great. It's like half my screen is gone. This should be fun. Um, okay, okay, so customer, I'm sorry? No, I was going to say, can, you can, so can you not see your screen? What's covering it? I can beautiful? see your faces, your beautiful faces. You should be um, able to, there should be a little minimize thing, or 
Yeah, the problem is um, I don't have a mouse anymore when I went into Keynote sharing the uh, full screen. Okay. So, um, okay. Wait, let's see if I, what is it doing? Um, uh oh. I'm just playing here. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay. okay, so customers are our number one priority. So there's three questions you guys need to be able to answer. Who are your customers? And then what do they feel, think, want, need, and are they ready to buy? And also, it's very important to know where they hang out. Um, so let's start answering these questions. But first, I don't want you guys to guess and make assumptions about what your customer wants, needs, and feels. Um, it's easy to kind of come up, you guys watch the Lifetime movie when the girl makes her like ideal husband checklist. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like the, the dream husband, and it never works out right um, because that's just not reality. So um, I want you guys to observe and research your target art audience and at this point I'm talking about a target audience very broad um, flight attendants brides busy moms um, let's see uh, corporate women or whatever just very 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 broad at this point um, and how are you going to observe them you want to know where they hang out online some can be forums social media um, a good place to go, go is look at product reviews because they ask questions or they might tell you what they're frustrated about products and also dig into your support emails too um, and then I want you to be a lurker and really really listen um, pay attention to the questions they ask um, the pain points struggles the needs you know their desires because typically if they come online and they ask a question it's something that they're really really having trouble with so um, so those are places you need to and take your time this is not something that should be done in like five minutes take 10 20 30 hours to do it um, so you really really know and I, a lot of you already have a customer base um, so dig into past emails and you know go back through your experiences with them and try to figure out if there's any questions that they had um, that just kind of you know hit home with you um, and just take tons of notes just tons of notes um, so why do we observe instead of just asking or doing a survey I want to tell you the story about the Sony legend um, Sony held a face a focus group uh, gosh, when was this Walkman? 80s maybe? <laughs> the yellow Walkman. And they had a group of people come in and they were doing a survey trying to figure out which color they liked better, yellow or black Walkman. Everybody said, we love the yellow. It's so sporty. It's really cool. Um, and then, you know, the Presenter said thank you and said okay on your way out. We have two tables um, You guys grab a Walkman on the way out everybody but one grabbed a black Walkman So the survey they all said yellow because that's what they thought that You know they wanted to hear and they were going kind of with what everybody else was doing But then it came down the survey was junk because they all picked the black Walkman so this is a Sony urban designer legend, so, um, but I think it's, it's really good to share the point of um, you need to really listen. Um, okay, so once you have all this data that you have, you need to kind of synthesize it and kind of take a hard look because it's going to be a lot. Um, and here is a little, little chart that I think is helpful to do. Um, on the x-axis, you have low pain like they're I mean it's kind of like a annoying you know occurrence it's not like something that really kills them and then on the other side the right side you have like high pain something that really really bothers them a lot um, and then take a look at all your data and kind of tally up how often the, you see these pain points and kind of plot them out on the charts um, 
the ones up in the upper, I'm pointing like you guys can see me, <laughs> the <laughs> upper right column, these are the people that it's, you hear it and see it a lot, right? And it's a really high pain point. This is where your greatest impact, where you can help people and the most people are. So I kind of, I just made up some stuff here. Um, so losing weight and busy and, you know, their time. And then if you go to the bottom, um, right. This is like high pain, but they don't talk about it much. So maybe confidence and self doubt or, you know, stuff like that. Um, this would be something that you could sneak in to your products and services that are be like little surprises that they're like, Oh, this is kind of cool. You know, it's kind of something extra to do. Um, now, low pain, and it happens a lot, is it's kind of like an annoyance. It's kind of like a pinprick, um, like meal planning. You know, I don't know if that would be a low pain, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, so and it's something that maybe will give them little wins, like you could help them, um, you know, figure out their meal planning because it happens a lot. Um, so that would be kind of you would do your greatest impact first. And then like the little wins, little pleasant surprises. And then the finer details is like, uh, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't happen very often, but you can just amplify your services and kind of give those finer details by hitting those, um, those points. You guys have any questions about this chart? I know it's kind of a little, <laughs> a lot, no. Okay. All right, moving on. Now, Terry, you recognize this stuff in here. This is Sarah Johnson, your author and wellness activist. So what uh, Terry and I did was we came up with some user profiles. Oh, oh, we went back. Hold on. Okay. Um, and this is looking at your data that you kind of, why you're observing and listening and also pulling from real people right? Real people that you've worked with um, and then you know their story really well. Um, so we have four quadrants here. I like to do either two or three. So there's two. I think we have two in here. Um, Terry's first um, user profile is Sarah Johnson. She's an author and she's a wellness activist. And we kind of, you know, give her some demographics. She's 44 years old. She makes $250,000 a year. She has husband, two kids, two dogs, family oriented. Um, she lives on a farm and minimalistic. Uh, she's hardworking, beautiful garden. I mean, get really detailed with these, with these people. Um, she wants to make more money, travel, become a best-selling author, work less, feel confident and safe, seek connections. And, you know, some of her needs are visibility. She's busy and isolated. She lacks the online marketing experience. And she's burnt out and tires easily. So this last quadrant is where you can help her, where you can empower her. So after looking at all this, you know, the research you've done and you've kind of come up with your um, ideal client, look at her needs and her goals and kind of, Synthesize down how you can help her. So for Sarah, um, you know, she needs some support and accountability. She needs to develop new habits, sleep and fitness, um, share inspirational success stories, um, blog, newsletter, media, and, you know, resources on how to market her business. So you can kind of take a look at the needs and then come up with solutions to help with those needs. And Jane Lively, I couldn't read my handwriting, Terry. I think that's the name we gave her. So um, same thing with her, you know, kind of give demographics. What are her dreams and goals, her obstacles, and then kind of look at all of it and see how you can solve the problems for her um, and empower her. I should say empower, not power. Um, okay, so... You guys are probably like, okay, this is all good, but how do I apply this stuff? So when you're writing your copy, when you're doing your services, social media, blog posts, websites, all touch points, everything that you do with your business, I want you to think about your people that you came up with. 
and talk like you're talking directly to that person. Um, just like it's, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it's really going to help when, you know, when you try to stay consistent with your copy and your images and everything like that. You guys have any questions so far? No? Okay. All right. So we're getting into defining your brand. Um, but I want to first start with dispelling some myths. A brand is not your logo. This is a trademark. It's a logo is a symbol, monogram, or any other graphic device. A trademark is not a brand itself. It's just the symbol for it. Your brand is not your fonts and it's not your colors. This is actually called a trade dress. The color, shape, typefaces, it's the face for your brand. So what is a brand? I took this quote from The Brand Gap. It's a wonderful book. Um, a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or organization. And we can foster this um, relationship and this feeling um, by nudging it along and then it becomes reality. And how we do that is we need to first start with brand attributes. Um, your customers, your products and services, your impact and benefits, your tone and voice, your you know, innovative and different, and values and beliefs. So this is another exercise. I use Terry's um, our exercise that we did together. Um, so what we like to do is just do really quick adjectives for each of these questions. And then we circle the top three and then we star the top one. So our first question is about your customers. How would you describe your ideal customer? Curious, hopeful, busy, selfless, professional, action takers, athletic, and overwhelmed. And Terry picked overwhelmed as her, you know, her top, top one. And then products, what do you do and what do you offer? Fitness, challenges, clean eating, organization, and coaching. Um, and we have coaching as the top one. And what do you value? Um, something, something <laughs> um, with your customers and how do they feel experiencing your brand um, after they experience your brand? They've lost weight, they're confident, they get fit, they get organized, and they, have, you know, they have better health. And the top one for this one was better health. Tone and voice. How do you sound to the outside world? What tone of voice does your brand speak to the people with? This is we have empathetic, clean, respectful, hopeful, supported, and energized, and the top one for this is empathetic. Um, innovative, how are you different from others? What makes you special? And we picked athletic, an athlete for Terry. Values, what do you believe, and why did you start you know, your company? Um, trusting, honest, organized, caring, change, and empower, and we picked uh, trusting for Terry. So what does all this mean? Um, it's good to have a brand statement, something that you can come back to every time that you're doing copy or images or social media posts. And, um, and we use the words that we just came up with to come up with the brand statement. Terry is the only health coach, and this, this is, guys, this is for you only. This is not something you go post on your website. This is just something that you reference um, when you're doing your stuff. Um, that is trusting and a former athlete. She helps overwhelmed women by getting them healthy and leaving them feeling confident. So those were her top, you know, her top words, and we just kind of put it into a brand statement. Okay, so we just kind of went over how does this apply, but this applies everything. Your copy, um, you go back and use those words um, that you came up with. And if you're empathetic, you know, make sure to sound empathetic when you're writing your copy. Um, if you're trustworthy, you might want to look for a color that the color psychology is for trust. Um, same with your, you know, your website. Um, I think one of uh, Terry's attributes was 
you know, overwhelmed. So you don't want your website to be overwhelmed. They're already overwhelmed. Um, again, the, you know, stay consistent with this. So here is Terry's stuff. All of her, this is her homepage is on the left and one of her images on the right in color. And then I put a picture of, you know, her and her kid. Um, because she wanted to be very family oriented. Um, I love a book. I'm going to show you guys in just a little bit. Let me see. Let me go grab it real quick. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's How to Style Your Brand. It is a great book. Um, you can take all of those attributes that you came up with and plug and play into the color psychology in this book and it helps you pick out your color palette that will speak to your audience. Um, and this is what I used to protect Terry's color palette. Um, so the blue, let me turn to the page so I can tell you guys. <clears throat> okay, so blue, um, is calm and trustworthy, forward thinking and focused and reflective. So her big thing was trusting. So we have blue in there to kind of convey trust. Um, and then the kind of the pink color is nurturing and soothing and reassuring and hopeful. And a lot of those words were her attributes as well. And then we have the purple which I don't know, we'll see. I think that, oh, here we go. Purple was truthful, authentic, quality, and purposeful, which again, we, you know, trust was a big factor for, um, you know, in Terry's attributes. So that's kind of how we came up with the colors. Um, it's, you know, you have to like the colors, but I don't recommend just picking your favorite color for your brand, um, actually look at the color psychology and make sure it's speaking to your, um, to your audience. Um, let's see, we made sure that the colors and the layout was really clean and simple because again, her, the client base is very overwhelmed. So we wanted to have a very, almost minimalistic, if you look at the internal pages, it's very, you know, very clean. And the colors are very bright and kind of, you know, warm and nurturing. So that is kind of how that rolled. And she also used some of her um, words that helped her with her tagline as well. So let's play a game. Everybody unmute. We're going to play a game. <laughs> <coughs> all right. So I wanted to kind of pull this all together. And show you how your brand messaging can really affect how people view you, their gut feeling about you. Um, and it's not always all about your visuals. So you guys take a look at all this list of attributes and tell me if you can name that brand. Anybody? No? Mini Cooper. Very good. <laughs> yep, this is the Mini Cooper. Let's see if it'll go. Um, so you can, they use their attributes to, in everything that they do, in their messaging, you know, not normal, um, kind of quirky and fun, and, you know, make sure they keep the British feel. Um, so this is, it's really powerful that you stick, you know, and stay consistent. We'll do one more, okay? Look at these um, brand attributes and tell me if you can figure out who the brand is. Dawn. She is on fire tonight. Who's saying that? <laughs> who is that giving all those answers? <laughs> <clears throat> so they're, you know, Dawn is, saves the wildlife, their original, um, you know, what concentrated, I don't remember exactly what all they were, I wrote down, but, um, but do you see how, you know, your, if they use, 
the attributes and make sure that's in everything that they touch. You don't even have to see their product to remember that it's them. Okay, so here are some of the books um, that I recommend reading. Um, the Brand Gap, it goes over a lot of, um, in more detail about the attributes and how to kind of bridge that gap between your business and the customer. And Don't Make Me Think it is all about website usability. If you guys are going to, you know, DIY your website, this is a great book to read. Um, it talks about, you know, just the functions and how to lay it out so you don't make your clients think. And <coughs> sorry, how to style your brand. This is all about color psychology. Um, and how you can take your brand attributes and distill it down to a color palette. And the Win Without Pitching Manifesto is just a good book. It, um, it's really good for sales and how to, um, you know, sell and stuff without being sleazy. Um, and, or feel sleazy. Selling's not sleazy, but you know what I mean. Um, okay. Um, you guys have any questions? Um, I'm going to... After you know we do this, I'm going to send you guys action plans and worksheets. But since this is Zoom, I don't have your emails, so you guys can go here and give me your email, and I can send that to you. Um, if that's cool, if not, I can give them to Terry, and she can pass them out. It's fine. Um, but I was going to give you guys the work, the worksheets on this. So you guys have any questions? Oh. Carrie, do you want to unshare your screen? Yep, I'm about to do that. I think oh, okay. it's kind of funny. It gives me an arrow now. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Okay, now I have to get you guys back. Here we go. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Oh, I was unmuted. Any other questions? Did I guess it's gonna bore you to death? <laughs> no, that was oh. what you're saying. That was a new one for me. I couldn't hear you, Kathleen. What'd you say? I said I never heard about color psychology before. Oh. That's really interesting. Yeah, uh, well question. I remember when I oh go ahead, Sarah. Oh no, sorry. You can finish if you want. Um if we're going to start doing a few branding things on our own, um, what would be probably the first thing you'd recommend? Like, a, you know, logo is not our brand, but um, once we figure out our ideal customer, like what's the next step on a few things? The brand attributes. I'm good. If you guys do the brand attributes um, exercise, that you can take all of those adjectives and then use them onto the color psychology to pull out your colors. Mm -hmm. And then you can work into your logo and then your tagline. Mm -hmm. Is the color psychology only available in that one book? The, no, it, oh. it's just the one that I, I, I okay. use, but it's all over. And it's okay. pretty much the same. Yep. I loved the, um, the graph. <laughs> <laughs> that's I my it? that's my industrial engineering coming out mm -hmm. i like graphs and charts <laughs> so it was so, yeah. i mean it actually like the points you were making i was like oh that's so true for me <laughs> yeah like, it's I just it's a really good way to visualize all the you know the data that you're getting in the notes and you know the questions that you're getting from people just to see the frequency of it and see what seems to be causing people the most pain and you know their struggle so you can focus on that because sometimes what we think is, you know, people are struggling with probably is not. So it's, it's interesting to actually really dig deep and look. You said something about looking at the support emails. What's, what does that mean? Support emails. Um, do you get, you guys get emails from some of your coaches or some of your, you know, like if you have 21 fix, um, people that are doing 21 day fix, look at the questions that you're, they're asking you and oh, just okay. keep a running list of those and just see what the common 
denominator is that they're struggling with. Got it. That makes sense. And then are you suggesting that that becomes our blog posts, our Facebook posts or whatever, just kind of answering those questions? Yeah, I would, um, you know, once you kind of really listen to the audience, you know, the, the ones that you're seeing the most frequent and seems to be the biggest pain point for them, turn that into your social media and turn that into your blog post um, or your Instagram, find a quote that works with that or whatever. Yeah, everything you do, just kind of help them. Even if you do a challenge, maybe it's a challenge that you do. Um, you know, like for me, a pain point is meal planning, you know? So um, if you saw that very, <laughs> Terry knows that because how much have <laughs> I complained about it? Um, you know, if you see that frequently, it might be, oh, ding, 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 I need to really do something about this. But it's hard to kind of look when you're at this high level just write everything down because we forget. Yeah, that's what I have trouble with. And I was going to say too, you know, you were talking about um, color and kind of coming up with, you know, your own identity. Some people who are just, because we have some coaches who are just starting out, um, mm -hmm. may not necessarily be ready to like jump into a website, but um, they can use some of these exercises to help with like, just like their Facebook banner or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you guys can do those things as well. And, you know, if you're putting up like quotes or something, even taking those colors and like putting your quote on the color, I think those things are helpful too. Cause it kind of brings out a little bit of you. That whole color thing was crazy to me. And I kept telling her, I like red, white, and blue. <laughs> like I like deep red, like, <laughs> like what deep red means, and and I was, it wasn't me at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so but I do like what you know what she did, and and I love my website. So I definitely could see after learning all of that. Not that that is like the main thing, but um, it did sort of um, make sense when we started. Spew, when I started spewing out all those adjectives, which by the way was also very hard. Um, and you know, just about yourself and who your customers are, but it was the first time that I really had to do that or stop to do it. And I had to do it because she was asking me the questions on the phone <laughs> and I had to answer. And, and um, she was kind of helping me along, but I do remember making those two specific people, although those people make a lot more money than I said they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. See, I'm telling you, my 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 handwriting was like chicken scratch that night. We were going so fast. So. I four people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do remember like thinking specifically of you know certain people and what they were um, like, who I was trying to speak to, and and after doing that in my head, and I wrote them all down too. Um, it was easier to target get like posts and blog posts and Instagram posts and things, which sometimes I have to go back, I think, and look at that again, because I forget, you know, and then I start going off on just random tangents and need to go back to that focus group. Yeah, it's really, easy. it's easy to kind of stay focused. And when you're talking to one person, it makes writing a lot easier, I think. So I was going to go back to the um, logo and if you're doing it yourself, I'm sure you guys have been on Etsy before, right? Um, and they have a lot of logo kits on there, um, but you can also 99% of the time tell the person that's selling the logo what colors you want. So you could, you know, pick the logo that you like and give them the colors, even the hex codes or whatever you come up with based on your color psychology. And that would be a really good way. I would not go to like Fiverr or whatever. Um, I would stay, you know, towards uh, creative market is another good place to get some logo logos. Um, if you want to do it that way and you can, you know, uh, change the colors on them to match the colors that you came up with. 
Does that work the other way? You said if you're drawn to a certain color, that might mean something or no? <laughs> um, yeah, but it might not be right for your customer. So, yeah. cause like with Terry, she loves red, right? And red, and you guys can Google color psychology. And I mean, this is, it's all going to be the same. I just like books. Um, let's see. You would think I would have it like bookmarked by now. Okay, so red is um, aggressive, strong, assertive, um, energetic, self-starter, and defiant. So that was really was not, you know, she was trusting and nurturing. It really didn't go well. Um, it's, uh, let's see. Well, and the funny thing is the, so I found her through somebody else's website and I like, I knew by looking at this coach's website that I was not anything like her. Mm -hmm. but I liked the design. I liked how clean it was. I liked whatever. And after we talked and she realized that I found her through this woman's website, she could tell <laughs> that I was not like her at all either. Um, I think he told me that she said, I bet you're clean. And I didn't know what that meant. I thought that meant like, are you hygienically uh, clean? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't swear. And you know, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, shut up is a naughty word in our house. But mm -hmm. I, so just like seeing that and I knew who that girl was and how she, you know, and it totally fit her. It did. So the fact that she was able to make that, her and you know and i looked at other um websites that she has done because she's done many um and she also can break she had she kind of broke up there were different things that she offered and i don't even know if you want to talk about this carrie but different services that she offered in terms of like just the branding mm -hmm. well i needed help with the branding but i also needed like i had written all of my um content on my other website we had to get that thing off Weebly. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. moved. Well, for me to do all that, I like the back end of WordPress is scary to me and gives me anxiety. And if I were to do it myself, it would have taken me like three years. So she did it in, I don't, I mean, it was quick. Um, and then we communicated back and forth quite a lot through everything. She like she would find something and then ask me if I liked it, and I would tell her if I did or not. And most of the time, I did. <laughs> um, but I I think yeah, it was just so helpful to have somebody. You know, it's really hard to find somebody who has like that knowledge that you trust. That was the hard part for me. Like I was asking all these people for help, but I just didn't know who I could trust. <laughs> um, so. Carrie did that for me. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> well, a lot of, you know, designers and websites, um, they're pretty makers. Um, you know, you have the gold foil everywhere and the hot pink and the big, you know, photo shoot of them and everything starts looking the same, you know. Um, so it's really good to kind of get to know who you are and your customers so you can be different. Um, because if everybody has the exact same website, you guys are going to just get lost, you know? So um, that's why it's really important. A lot of people don't go through these exercises. They just say, hey, what colors do you like? You know, and it doesn't work out well because if we had done red for Terry, it would have been too strong. It would have been too aggressive and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, really important to get to know who your customers are and who you are. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of people that want, you know, like foul language on their websites and um, that kind of stuff. So if you work with anybody or like if you get a copywriter, just make sure you're very, very clear on, you know, that kind of stuff as well because they can bring their own personal preferences in and it could be a nightmare. So um, even down to just verbiage, just be very clear on what you want. You guys have any other questions? I know it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, um. no, this was really great. Thank you so much. Tell tell, tell everybody how they could get in touch with you if they're interested in learning yeah, more. Yeah, my website's actually 
down at the moment because I'm putting up new case studies and Terry's going up there. So, um, yeah, but you guys can email me at Carrie, C A R R I E, at CarrieCGreen.com. And I'll, I'll put your information, um, I'll put it in Inspiration Nation um, and our team under the recording of this too so everybody can okay. grab it. Yep, and then I'll, because um, I wanted to incorporate your questions too, um, and I'll get you the, the notes and also those worksheets that are in the presentation blank, you know, so that they don't have the information in there already. Yeah, yeah, those, that, those exercises were so helpful to me. It just, it, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're. Yeah, there's one thing that I forgot to tell you guys is don't take a lot of time. We actually had a stopwatch when we were doing the exercises because it keeps you from overthinking, um, you know, like a minute or two on each question and just, you know, regurgitate just adjectives over and over um, and then go back through and kind of narrow them down. But don't sit there for 20 minutes and try to come up with more adjectives because then it will go off. It won't stay on brand. What was the, um, you had a website in your presentation with lead pages. What, what was, that was the worksheets you're talking about? Mm -hmm. That was the worksheets. Okay, I um, think I, I wrote it down correctly. I'll post yeah. that too. We'll give, um, let's see. La, la, la. Oh, it's gonna let me um, copy. Going back and forth is kind of interesting. I've never used Zoom before. <laughs> okay, I'm put it in chat. Oh, perfect. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, Terry, I don't have the pretty little link like you do for lead pages. Straight up lead pages. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Can you give me a favorite? Does that mean an M calm? Probably. Uh, yeah, probably. Try it one more time so we can click it. Let's see, hold on, let me open. Open link. <clears throat> yeah, it's working. Is it not clickable? It's not, but is it leadpages.com? No, it's .co. Oh. I got it. You can do it? Okay, it's just me. Yeah, I got it too. Never mind, don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. a question about- It won't be immediately, but I will get it to you once I, I wrote down, I was like writing down your questions too, so. Oh, there it is. I got it. Do you have a question, Sarah? Yeah, well, I, I think, I mean, it doesn't quite go with branding, but more website. Do you suggest a certain website host or, I guess, where we put things when we do have a website? Is it like, I know WordPress is very popular. Is that the one you'd recommend most? Or um, and you said you had to get her off Weebly, like, is that? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily do Weebly or Wix because it's harder to get the content off. Um, There's no copy paste. Like, you can, but it, would, it just depends on how much content you have. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, with Terry's, they have a different extension on the URL for Weebly. Mm -hmm. So we're having to kind of fix all the little links in mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they do that on purpose, but um, yeah. Um, Squarespace is a really good, um, they already have really good templates to use mm -hmm. if you want to use that. Use that. Um, I don't know if you've been on there before. I've actually heard of that a, a yeah. lot this past month from a couple of people that like it. Um, is one, like, is WordPress fairly easy to navigate for somebody who's going to manage it themselves? Um, it depends on how techy you are. Um, Terry, do you want to answer that since it's, what do you think? Um, yeah, uh, Kathleen, you have WordPress too? I do, yes. Okay. I just am starting to learn it. And, um, when Carrie was done with my site, she sort of took me, screen shared like the back of my WordPress site sort of took me through how to do everything. Um, so I've made, like I've put up new recipes and blog posts. Um, I know like how to add content and blog. I, I said all I really would be doing was adding blog posts daily, putting in pictures, not daily, but weekly, um, and adding new recipes. I really won't be changing like the main pages, mm -hmm. um, you know, and if I need to, I know where to do just like, you know, if I want to add like 
instead of last year, two years ago, whatever. I know how to go in and do those things. And to me, now that I've done it a few times, I have I have the hang of it. It's it, but when I look like down to the pages that I don't really need to bother with, it looks a little confusing <laughs> to me. But I don't know, Kathleen, do you can, can you speak? You've been using it longer. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think of it like yeah, it's learning another language, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it may be that it comes easily to some, and you know what I mean. But so I think some things are true across all blogs. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you know you you post. There are pages there, you know what I mean? It, you put pictures in I, and you try and link things together. So I, I think of it as a learning process and no matter There's what- There's tons of tutorials out there, you know? Squarespace is a little bit more plug and chug. Um, you know, if you wanted to start there and you can't export from Squarespace as well. I primarily do WordPress because that's what I'm comfortable with. I like being able to get in behind in code and all that stuff on the sites. Um, WordPress also gives you the ability later if you want to do a course or like how Terry has her lead pages connected. You can't do that with Squarespace. Um, mm. There's just more limitations over on Squarespace, but it just kind of depends on where you want to start. Um, but there's tons of like themes. For WordPress as well that you know theme forest is really good um, you can get a theme for like you know $60 or so and you'll have but you'll have to go in and still create your pages but a lot of the heavy coding is already done mm -hmm. um, with Squarespace you just kind of pick and choose you know which theme you want and then plug in um, images it's a little bit more template based okay and what's Quick, can you quickly explain like the lead pages thing? Like, what, where do you go from Terry's page into lead pages? Is that when you sign up for the five day clean eating thing, Terry? Yes. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. That, that was a That's Weber. what it takes you to? Yeah. A Weber does that. I don't really, we have lead pages and it's hooked up. I need to actually make a lead page and put it on my site. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> The weekend but um but kathleen has lead pages on hers right or something similar so far i only have the free thing i haven't paid for lead pages i have it's a plugin called rapidology but it's connected to lead pages okay. and if you go on my site it's the thing that pops up after a few yeah. seconds it says would you yeah. like a free meal plan yeah. yeah and then i have mine connected to infusionsoft which is a little not a little it's more pricey than a weber but it's got the capability to run a lot of, we could talk about that one later when mm -hmm. you guys are ready for that. It's a little, it's, it's a little bit much, but I, it's really cool. And it's so, um, like it works for you when you're sleeping kind of thing. Yeah. But just from Infusion Soft one, is nice. And so is Entreport. It's a really good one too. Okay. Um, one. Yeah. But just having that Rapidology thing on my page has got me, in whatever I think I've had it on there for a month maybe and I've gotten a hundred new leads from it almost. Oh, awesome. Well the cool thing about lead pages I don't know I haven't used the one that you've used but you can actually put your opt-in on Facebook as an opt-in that's embedded within your you know within your page so it's really really it integrates really nicely with Facebook and also um, if you run Facebook ads you can you know link it to there and it'll go over it just really I don't know if yours does that too I haven't used that one before I don't know I don't know. Um, <laughs> but they also have like um, if you guys do webinars like not just the you know within your team but maybe they have a webinar um, lead pages where it kind of just does the whole funnel for you mm -hmm. so um to me it's worth it because it keeps you from like designing opt-in pages you know um they're not always the most i mean you saw mine it's it's they're very simple they're not the you know like high design but um they work you know so yeah thank you mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for getting on, Carrie. You're this welcome. was really helpful and some some really cool information. And and for me, some of that stuff I had heard before, but like I, it somehow goes away from your brain. It's nice to kind of bring it back into focus, mm -hmm. like remembering who you're posting to, yep. narrow down that specific person with specific attributes, and 
And the color thing I thought was so interesting. Oh, and the chart, that was my favorite part. I know, I love the charts, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, if you guys, you know, keep the people in the center of your work and every, it kind of all falls into place, so. Cool. Mm -hmm. And thanks for the for the webs. I already signed up for your thing, but um, we'll post it like Terry said on the because some people will listen to this call later that can't get on at this time or this day. So we'll make sure they get everything too. So thanks for your time. I really appreciate you. Um, and if you guys have any other questions, just email me. I'm happy or in you know message me on Facebook or whatever. If you can't find anything or need help with themes, if you guys are going to try to do it yourself, it's fun. But I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cool. Um, well, if you want to go, Carrie, I'm just going to tell them about a couple of things coming up for our team that will, won't be very interesting. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Terry. Thanks. I'll see you in the 21 days challenge soon. Okay. okay. So, thanks. Cool. Yes. <laughs> see ya. See ya. Bye. Um, that was really cool, Terry. Thanks for sharing her with us. She's, yeah, she's cute. She's so, she seems very knowledgeable. and. Um, that's awesome. Um, okay, so I just want to tell you guys a couple things because I know we're right at 10 o'clock now. So um, next week we have another speaker. And um, I think it's actually Terry and I were talking about it because it's actually the person who helped me originally with my blog. And she just had approached me recently and said that she's um, interested in kind of taking on some more people. And what I want you to know, I think Terry and I could share this, is that none of these are, no pressure to be in contact with any of these people, but just to kind of, what I asked her to talk about next week was just the general stuff about blogs and like generally what is a post and a page and how they're kind of similar and whatever. And um, we just, I think we both know, have heard from you guys that some of you are really interested in starting blogs and getting websites up and going. And I think um, we were talking that it might just be neat to hear different perspectives and different, um, you, you know, people have different approaches. And as, as you can see, there are as, as many different kinds of blogs as there are people. So, um, so if this is something that continues to interest you, um, tune back in next week as well. It'll be a different kind of talk because she's um, the girl that approached me. Her name is Carla. And she, like I said, helped with mine in the beginning. So, um, so come tune back in next Tuesday, same time, <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and um, the other thing I just wanted to say is I know we all saw in there about Crystal, and it's just it's so, so heart-wrenching. And I just wanted to take a minute to say um, I, I hope that we can figure out something for our team to do to support her, but I really want Shannon to kind of leave that for us since Shannon's been in touch with her and I don't want to overstep any bounds and you know what I mean, but, but I, a couple of you have asked like for an address and stuff like that. And I just want to, I, I want to get to all that and I'm sure she will want to hear from us and want our support, but I want to make sure it's, you know, in line with what she wants and when she wants that and all that. So I, I just, I'll keep you posted or you might hear more from Shannon, but I just wanted you to know that we'll, we will do something as a team, but I, I'm not sure what that is just yet. So, um, so I think just thoughts and prayers for now is what we can just, do at this point. I just saw that notice today. How long ago was Yester that? Yesterday, I think. It was yesterday. And it was obviously a sudden death. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really sad. Um, so, um, so, yeah, on that sad note. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to end like that. Let me think of another way to end our call tonight. Yeah, and, but I don't want to minimize that in any way either. Um, so, yeah, so maybe we can just keep her in our thoughts and prayers tonight. Um, um, I, okay, so I do want to, I just want to say one last thing that has nothing to do with that so we can end it a little differently, um, which is maybe more for me than you guys. I don't know. It's just so hard to think about that. Um, I'm part of two different push groups right now. And um, one is um, from 10, 15 Star Diamond coaches have decided to band together, including our upline, Alyssa, Melanie, um, Lindsay Matway, Brandy Botts. Mm, can't think of the others off the top of my head, but anyway. And what I wanted to, to do, wanted to ask you all is if you would be interested in me sharing that information in I, you know, I think you all know my feelings about push groups are not always the most favorable, favorable ones, but I feel like they've worked for these people, 10, 15 Star Diamond coach, 
coaches have come together for this. So I'm wondering if you guys might like to start that in February. And I can share with you what they're sharing with us. And that was the intent of this group was to kind of pass it down. Um, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't want it to seem like I, I feel like I, anyway, I know that I've said, I don't want to seem contrary to what I've said before, but I really am going to try and give this one a go because I feel like I want to give it another chance because it's working for everybody else. I'm also part of another one um, that has nothing that's not Beachbody specific. It's Leanne Ruff, who was, um, used to be at corporate Beachbody. And she has now moved on to another network marketing company, but she's kept contact with lots of people. So this is another group. Um, Mia's in there, I think, from our team. I don't think anybody else from our team is in there that I know of. Is anybody in there on this call? No. Go mine now. Anyway, and that's another one that's just, are you in there? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Are you liking it? Um, I joined and then I haven't seen any, uh, I'm gonna have to go in there. For some reason, my stuff is not like, I need it to like prompt me. I can't keep track of all these groups I'm in and nothing has shown up. So I forgot until you just said something about it. So I haven't seen any of the posts yet. Yeah. Um, so basically what I'm trying to do for these different groups, and also, I also, Sarah, this is probably crazy of me, but I don't, I guess that's where I am. The Pinterest one, I'm doing that too. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm structuring my day that at a certain time, I'm going to do the assignment in that group. And then I'm not checking into that group again. <laughs> so I'm doing the Pinterest one early in the morning, not checking in that group anymore. And then I'm doing the other ones at lunchtime. And then I'm not going to, I don't have my notifications on for any of the groups. And I'm just going to check in, do the assignment, move on. And one of the assignments was the dream board, the vision board that I posted on an inspiration nation. So I, was, I thought that was really fun. And um, I did it a little different. I think you guys saw it. I actually printed out pictures of my that were important to me, my family, my family going on a vacation, whatever, as opposed to like a magazine or something like that. Um, and then in the other group, in Leanne's group, we actually had to write a letter to ourselves a year from now, um, congratulating ourselves on the success we've had this year. And um, that was really cool. Like I'm reading it every night, like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> Look at all I've done this year. <laughs> and it was really fun. And I thought it was really meaningful. And I've I've heard these things before and sometimes I enter into these groups and I don't really fully participate. And I think that's the problem for me is why these groups haven't worked because I haven't really allowed them to work. And that was the first call of the one that's with the 15 star diamonds is basically like, get your mind in the place that this group is important and it's going to work for you and then do it. And I was like, Oh, I think that might've been missing for me before. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to offer that out there. I'm going to, pull some stuff together first before, which is why I'd like to kind of do these groups for a week or two before I start trying to translate the stuff to you. But if you want to keep in the back of your mind, maybe starting February 1st is what I'm thinking. And then we kind of push forward together, whoever wants to do that. And then maybe we can all get in the mindset that if you're, you know, designating a time of day, or maybe it's going to be a block time every other day or something like that um, to actually do what's asked or what's suggested in the group is my intention. I'm two days in now, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, okay, so with that, does anybody have anything left that you wanted to say or talk about tonight? Anything burning? All right, well, thanks for getting on, you guys. Thanks, Terry, for sharing Carrie with us again. That was really helpful. And um, we'll see you, we'll see you all soon. Good night. <laughs>